Hello everyone, I'm Chase from Zacuto, and today I will be discussing the in-depth operations of our Gradical HD. Now to get started, you need to mount the Gradical to your rig, right? And there are a couple ways to do this. You could use any mounting accessory that's able to utilize the Gradical's rosette, which is just an airy standard rosette, but with a quarter 20 screw port in the center. We recommend using the Axis Mini that mounts from your rig's front rods or from above in a recoil handle which we prefer because it keeps more rod real estate in the front open for other accessories. Once mounted, the Axis Mini has two rotational adjustment points so that you don't have to fiddle with the mounting points again, and it has one length adjustment point. All three of these work together to get the Gradical right into your eye. Now if you don't have an Airy Rosette mounting accessory, you can utilize the second mounting option, which is the quarter 20 on the bottom. With your Gradical mounted, you're ready to click in the standard LPE6, which is just a Canon 5D and 7D battery, into the battery port on the side. It can run off this battery for about two and a half to three and a half hours, depending on what features you decide to use. This battery and a charger are included with the Gradical. Once it's clicked in, it is securely locked into the Gradical until you push the battery release button on the side and remove it. If you want to use a larger power source, the Gradical will work with battery eliminators, which are adapters that can run power to the Gradical from any power source with a DTAP, Hiroshi, or Limo input. And then you press the red button on the front to turn it on. Now remember when you're finished to turn it off because it's really easy to forget to do that, but your Gradical is going to last a lot longer if you do. Now the Gradical can take in an HDMI and HD-SDI signal. And not only can it send that signal back out to a monitor, transmitter, or other device, but if you're giving it a signal from an HDMI, it can cross-convert and send that signal out the SDI or HDMI and SDI simultaneously. All of the ports are covered with a water-resistant rubber that can be pulled out and pushed back in whenever it's convenient for you. When you're shooting outside, the sun can still get in here and burn the micro OLED screen if you're not careful. So to combat that, we've created this automatic closing eye cup. Just use the side of your head to effortlessly open the door, and when you pull your head away, it'll close automatically. It takes a little practice, but once you have it down, it works beautifully. If you're shooting indoors, you can flip the larger side of the eye cup back, which will hold the door open, or you can just pull the door off completely and return it later before going outside again. The Gradical ships pre-installed with a shield of optically clear acrylic that's coated with our patented antifog formula. This is our level one of antifog protection, and this will keep the viewfinder's lens from fogging up in moderate fog conditions. Now for more severe fog conditions, you can upgrade to the level two of antifog protection. This is a thin shield included with the Gradical, also coated in our patented antifog formula. To upgrade to level two, remove the rubber eye cup and boot from the Gradical. Remove the three screws in the rim and take out the level one piece. Peel the protective plastics off of the level two shield and set it on the rim before replacing the eye cup to the Gradical. Make sure the eye cup's rubber is pulled completely over the lip of the Gradical rim and slide the boot back on. You'll notice a USB port on the front of the Gradical right next to the power switch. Not only do we use this to update the firmware, but you can import and export custom LUTs directly into the body. Now let's get into the menu features. To access the menu, you're going to push the joystick located on the side of the Gradical straight in. Once in the menu, you'll search up and down with the joystick as well. And to move to the next menu, you can push the joystick in or slide the joystick to the right. Slide the joystick left to step back one menu or out of the main menu altogether. At the top of the main menu is display calibration. Pretty straightforward, this menu contains all the settings needed to calibrate your Gradical's display. Brightness, contrast, and saturation, as well as the brightness of the independent red, green, and blue color channels are all adjustable on a negative 100 to 100 scale. To change an adjustable feature, push the joystick straight in, then use the up and down movements to make the respective changes. You can also set your gamma between 0.20 and 2.60, Below gamma is the restore default option, and that's going to set all of your settings back to their original place. Image flip comes in handy whenever it's necessary to mount the Gradical upside down, like if you're shooting left-handed, for example. Now the last two options in this menu are select preset and store preset. When you've calibrated the Gradical's display how you'd like, you have the option of going into the store preset menu and saving those settings to one of four slots. 
that can be recalled at any time in the Select preset menu. Next in our main menu is the LUTs menu. The first option you see is Import Custom LUT, and this will allow you to create a 1D LUT on your computer, save the LUT to a flash drive, insert the flash drive into the Gradicle's USB, and import that LUT directly into the Gradicle. Within the Import Custom LUT menu are 16 slots to save your LUTs to. Earlier, I created a LUT that I'm going to save to the number one slot. After I insert my USB drive, I can select the slot and the Gradicle will show me a list of all the LUTs that are currently saved to that drive. When I select the one I want, it will save it to that slot. Now you'll notice that once the LUT has already been saved to the slot, the Gradicle will give you the option to replace it if you select it again. Right under Import Custom LUT, you'll find Create Custom LUT. Set your desired settings and then select to save that custom LUT. You will see the 16 slots and right at the top is the one I imported moments ago. So I'm going to save this one to slot number two. And there we have it. Whether you import or create a LUT within the Gradicle, it will be saved forever until it's overwritten. Below the Create Custom LUT menu, you'll find Export Custom LUT menu. Just select it, plug in a USB drive, and you can choose any LUT from your 16 slots to export to that flash drive and bring it to your computer. Next in the LUTs menu are the Select Preset EVF LUT and select custom EVF LUT options. And they're how we're going to actually apply a LUT to the image within our Gradicle. The select preset EVF LUT menu provides a list of LUT presets that were developed by professionals to apply to the image in the Gradicle. Once selected, you can simply toggle the off option within the menu to turn the LUT off. And you even have the ability to toggle the monochrome option on as well. Now within the Select Custom EVF LUT menu is where we will find access to the 16 slots available for custom LUTs. You can see right at the top are the two LUTs that I applied earlier. I can choose to toggle one on or off within here. Now the next two options in the LUTs menu are Select Preset SDI Outlet and Select Custom SDI Outlet. And these work on the exact same principles as the two above, but these options only apply the LUT to the signal leaving out of the Gradicle's SDI. Whether you're looping out the SDI or cross-converting an HDMI to an SDI, the Gradicle will be able to have one LUT on in its own display for the operator and a completely separate LUT going out to another monitor for whomever. All right, that's it for LUTs. So the next option in our main menu is color bars. These are useful to help calibrate the Gradicle or external monitors if your camera does not generate its own color bars. You have the Sempty bars, a Macbeth chart, and a blue only at your disposal. Back to the main menu, the next option is Scopes. The first option in the Scopes menu allows you to toggle their location to be on top of the viewable image or below the viewable image. Now the Scopes Source option can be toggled so that the scopes will reflect the unaltered camera signal disregarding any added LUT that may be turned on, or they can be toggled to reflect the values created by an added LUT. The Gradicle has the ability to have these scopes toggled on and off on its own screen, and it can also send a custom layout of scopes out to SDI to another monitor. You get the same options with each, so I'll show you these options within the Gradicle. The Gradicle has three scopes, a histogram, a waveform, and a vector scope, and you have the option of having none on, one on, two on, or all three. And you can position each to any position on the side or center. You can see because I have all three up right now, it's automatically moving the others to the open areas accordingly. The fact that they are displayed under or above the viewable image is great because other brands of viewfinders and monitors sometimes place the scopes right on top of the image, which is very annoying. And the Gradicle's histogram has two modes, Luma and RGB, and you can look at a linear histogram or log histogram. And actually, all of these scopes, as well as the viewable image, are constantly moving around just a few pixels at a time, and that's going to prevent any permanent burn-in to the display. All right, next on our list is the Overlays menu, and this is where you'll find features that overlay on top of the viewable image to help with its focus, exposure, and framing. First up, you can toggle False Color on and off to help with exposure. Our red line focus assist is a bit of a misnomer because you can actually select from six other colors if the red option is too difficult to see, like if the subject matter you're shooting was all red. And levels one to three determine the sensitivity of the Gradicle's range of focus. 
Level one only replaces the finest edges with colored dots. And level three replaces those same edges and the other edges that may have just been a touch less in focus. You've got zebras for exposure assistance that can be toggled on and off. You manually set the high and low IRE levels anywhere from zero to 109. And both have the option to be displayed in the seven different colors. You can also adjust the stride, which is the distance between the lines and the width of the lines themselves. To frame your shot perfectly, the Gradical has a selection of frame lines. A 4-3 option with an action safe, a 15-9 option with an action safe and 4-3 within it, 16-9 with an action safe and 4-3 within it, and there are also 1-8-5 to 1, 2-4-0 to 1, and 2-6-6 to 1 ratios. There's a center cross that can be toggled on and off, a 3x3 grid option as well, and finally, the menu itself can be positioned from the upper left corner of the Gradical all around the display. And you can even make it more transparent so that you can view it and the Gradical screen simultaneously a little better. Next on our hit list is the meters menu. You can toggle audio meters on and off and set them anywhere around the edge of the screen. You'll notice that with the scopes off, the audio meters will not be on top of the image itself, but below it. The battery level indicator shows the level of your Gradical's battery, obviously. It can be toggled on and off, as well as moved around the Gradical's display. The Gradical has its own pixel-to-pixel -pixel zoom feature that will work with any camera. When it's enabled and the menu is off, the directional pad on the side of the Gradical automatically equips itself as a joystick that searches around the zoomed image. The center option within the menu will bring you back to the center of the image, and the pan rate allows you to adjust the speed that the directional pad searches around the image on a scale of 5 to 50. You'll notice that when I increase the pan rate, it searches around the image much faster than before. Next up are the Gradical's DSLR scaling features. The first option is the Auto Playback option. When toggled on, the Gradical will automatically detect the largest size it can expand the image to while ensuring that none of the camera's image or metadata is cut off, even if your camera changes between record mode and playback mode. Also in this menu are the numerous camera presets that have been precisely scaled for each specific camera. These sizes are set to fill the maximum space of the Gradical's viewable image area with the image that your camera will record. The next two options in the scaling menu are the Create User Presets and Recall User Presets options. When you create a preset, you can save it to one of the eight user preset slots. Once saved, recall your custom presets at any time in the Recall User Preset menu. Over and under scan ability is great for a slight punch in or out of your image. With overscan enabled, the Gradical will automatically enlarge the image slightly. Normal is normal, of course, and there are three levels of underscan that will minimize the image. And the video format option here is really just a quick display of various information that our developers use to help with debugging. So, back to the main menu, we come to our anamorphic settings. Now, depending on what anamorphic ratio you're shooting at, selecting its anamorphic preset will automatically de-squeeze the image so that it will appear normal in the Gradical. Below anamorphic in the main menu is the frame store option. This feature allows you to save up to seven frames within your Gradical, which is a huge help when keeping continuity. The first step is to select which store number you'd like to save to. I'm gonna keep it at number one right here. Then I'm going to go to the capture option at the bottom and select it. You see I get a prompt in the corner telling me to hit any of the function buttons, which are the four buttons on the side of the Gradical to finalize the capture. Press that. And now my frame is saved. So let's say my camera gets bumped. I can simply go up to the show option, toggle it on. Because my store number is still set to one, it's going to show me that save frame and I can go about determining how to correct my shot and get it back to normal. Below show is show style. With opaque selected, when I toggle the frame on and off, it is showing me the entire frame. 
But if I change this option to transparent, it's going to show me my saved frame at about half the opacity, which will allow me to look at my current frame and saved frame at the exact same time. And with that, we have gone through almost all of the features that the Gradical has to offer. And as you may have noticed, there are quite a few. So to make using these features a little easier, we've given the Gradical eight function buttons. There are four on the side, and with the menu off, each direction on the joystick is a function button as well. I like to call them speed buttons because they allow you to engage or disengage a feature quickly with the press of a button. So there's no need to dig into the menu. The function button menu is found under the frame store menu in the main menu. And within it, you can see that each of the four function buttons and each of the directions on the joystick have their own section. To program a feature, just find the button you wish to program, select it, and choose from the many options of features you can assign to that button. At Zakudo, we are always trying to improve upon everything we do, so there's no slacking when it comes to providing firmware updates to upgrade our products. Now, installing the update is as simple as downloading it from our website, putting it on a flash drive that has been formatted in FAT32 or XFAT, and inserting that drive into your Gradical. Within the Gradical main menu, almost at the bottom, is the update option Within the menu, you'll see the USB drive. With the USB drive inserted, selecting this option will automatically install the update. And at any time, for whatever reason, you have the option of restoring the Gradical back to its factory default. And last but not least, at the very bottom of the main menu is the About menu, which will display some of the Gradical's information. And that is it for the many features that the Gradical HD has to offer. Now, if you want a little more in-depth information on these features, you can check out the digital manual available on our website. Thanks for watching.